Okay. Yeah. So, how's everyone's summer going? Man, my summer has been going great. Enjoying the sun from my room. I love the fact that we have longer days and longer nights. If you're just tuning in, welcome to this live chat. We're going to wait a few more minutes so that people can join us. I was just sharing how my summer is going so far, but we haven't heard from you, Renia. How has your summer been going? Quite the experience, actually. Um, I'm currently living off campus for the first time, and it has actually been a blast. Um, I spend most of my time cooking, as you can see, decorating my room, and not to mention because it's been so long since the heat's, like, you know, finally the heat is back, so I love taking, like, walks during the summer. Um, and I see that more people are slowly joining into the chat. We've gone from 76 to 111 participants, and we've Ooh. obviously been interacting with you and we're really excited to have you guys so we're gonna wait one more minute to let people start logging in but in the meantime let's get caught up with you claudia okay so i feel like same with me i've been loving taking walks because the summer is really nice here it's something i really really appreciate because it reminds me of home whenever it's warm outside and then when it comes to being at home i feel like i've done a lot of like diys and recipes there's a soup recipe i want to try it reminded me when you talked about soup, yeah. So, all that. But okay, so I see that 115, 16, 15 it keeps changing. Um, mm -hmm. Have already joined in, so let's get started. Hola a todos, bienvenidos. I am Claudia. I am a fourth art, a fourth year arts and business student from Honduras. We want to thank you for tuning in and congratulate you for accepting your offer at the University of Waterloo. Like I said, I'm going into my fourth year of arts and business and speech communications. And I chose Waterloo because of all of the amazing resources that they offer for international students. Hi everyone, my name is Nathaniel. I'm talking to you live from my house. <laughs> um, I'm a third year student in the geomatics um, department, uh, environment faculty, so if you're environment, say yeah. Uh, I'm from Nigeria and I chose Waterloo because I heard a lot of stories about Waterloo and the environment program. I'm very much interested in learning about the environment and climate change. Cool. So, assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Rania and I'll be going into my second year of arts and business starting fall 2020. Cool fact regarding my ethnicity is that I'm from Pakistan, but my family and I live in Saudi Arabia, but currently I'm in Waterloo by myself. <laughs> Sad. Um, so I decided to choose Waterloo for the courses it offers with uh, economics and law because I really want to have a career in politics. So I believe these courses will help me carve my way to a career in politics. So getting started, the purpose of this live chat is to guide all of our future students on all the resources they'll need to make their transition easy and comfortable to Waterloo. So everyone in the chat, we've already heard that someone of you from India, from Pakistan, from China. So the rest of you who just joined the chat in right now, how about you guys tell us where you're from and we'll read your, um, we'll read your answers out in a while. So today we'll obviously be talking about a multitude of things such as transition resources for you as international students, immigration support and services, and everything you need to know about residents. You guys can ask questions throughout the hour but we will be waiting until the end of each section to answer them. If you're having any difficulty, in, let us know by messaging the Ask Us panelist uh, in the chat. You can get there by clicking the speech bubble button on the bottom panel. When you're ready to chat with everyone, make sure to select all um, participants. For the full live chat experience, we want to make sure that you can see us properly. So in the video window, hover over the top right hand corner and you will see grid view option. Once you select that, you should be able to see all of us together in like a grid view format. So that'll help like maximize the experience of the live chat. Okay, and also make sure to tune in at the end of the live chat because we will be having a give. In, tell us in the chat, we would like to know. Places. Um, when I was living in Saudi Arabia, we had just like one designated room with like a table, a chair, a shelf with everyone's books in it. And then we had like a printer on the side and, um, you know, obviously like, so we had just like one designated area to do like all our studies and all our work in. 
So when I came over here to Waterloo, there was like, it's like so many different things I could study. I could study like, you know, in the libraries, I could study um, in, um, oh, it's raining outside. <laughs> okay. And I could study like in, in my residence, I could study at the cafeterias and, you know, there was just all these different places I could study. And uh, that actually helped me focus more because my studying habits were not monotonous anymore. And that helped me like, feel refreshed every time and not bored or anything. So that was pretty cool. I feel like whether you're staying, whether you're staying back home or you're coming to Waterloo, it's always important to find a workspace where you can concentrate, you can study in peace and you feel comfortable. But for those who are coming to Waterloo, we wanna let you know the options that you have to getting from the airport to campus. It is important that you do look at these options ahead of time in case you have to purchase a ticket or if any restrictions are being imposed because of COVID-19. The options you have include booking through Airways Transit, sit, taking a taxi, taking the bus or a train, or if you're traveling with someone who is over the age of 25 and has a driver's license, you can rent a car. Uh, thank you for that, Julia. Man, like, there are so many ways you can get to Waterloo. I remember getting off the plane on my first time and like heading to the airport taxi service and like i had to like bargain my price to how to move, get from Pearson international airport so check out our international student guide we're going to add the link in the chat below okay and uh, if you're planning on booking your flight remember to check the travel advisory information for your country and canada including rules about self-isolating once you arrive again you can check the chat for the links that we'll be dropping below so earlier we just asked you if you're planning to travel this fall or if you're staying at home, staying at home, what will your workspace setup look like? There are a lot of different examples and answers here in the chat. So Isha Lalani says a table in my room probably. Yes, same here. Um, some people say, oh, uh, Yash says I will be coming to campus this fall and probably studying in my dorm. And then what else? So a lot of people are like, oh, we're studying from our tables. And a lot of people will be studying in residence. So that's that's pretty cool, you guys. Honestly, relatable and the right thing to do, right thing to do at um right now at this time. So it's pretty cool. So oh, some people are like, might not be able to come to campus. Sad. Don't worry, you guys. Um, I'm sure this situation is getting better. You know, things are like flattening. Of course, you have to put in your own effort into you know reducing the curve as well. So anyway, moving on, I'd like to tell you guys about Waterloo Ready. We recommend you um, complete, um, complete the Waterloo Ready program so you get to know your faculty better and feel confident about the skills you have to be successful in your first year. Throughout the summer, you can attend a live chat with your faculty, complete, uh, complete learn modules. By the way, learn is Waterloo's online training tool, and this will help you get academically prepared. And last but not least, you guys can meet like, meet, like upper year mentors who will um, help answer your question and check in with you as you prepare to start the fall term. And this will help, you know, will help, you know, your transition to Waterloo become easier. Okay, and if that's not something you'd be interested in, check the chats because we're dropping the links for Waterloo Ready now. Yeah. And keep an eye on your email, which will direct you to register for the your faculty's live chat so you can learn more about your faculty's programs. Okay, and I know that all of the questions you have right now would be regarding international and first year orientation, but do not worry, we're here to let you know that you know that all programming will be virtual and the university is currently working on what that will look like exactly. And as soon as they have something, they will let you know. So be checking your email constantly. All of the communications will be going on there. Yeah. So right now we're going to pause and answer some questions that have been coming in about preparing for Waterloo and traveling to Canada. So I'm just going to look into the question. So right now, Nandish asks, when will we be creating our university email? Um, you're going to be receiving an email from email from the university that asks you to set up, you know, set up your account. So keep an eye out for that. Um, from Isaac, he said, can someone explain about the deferral and the process? So if you're unable to begin your university in September, you can request a deferral. So decisions will be made on a case-by-case -case basis, and the application is now open, and the deadline to request a deferral is August 1st. For more information, please refer to this 
um, this, web, this web page. I'm about to drop that in. Okay, it's dropped in the link below. Also, um, someone is asking for online classes. Would we have to tune in in Canada's time, or we'll have to tune in different time from international students? Um, I believe that you know the online classes is going to be open to all, and it's also going to give you time. So it's going to be at your own pace. Online classes mainly at your own pace. So like you can do it at 4 a.m. You can do it at 2 a.m. 2 a.m. You can do it at 2 p.m. And I can't lie. Sometimes I do my assignments at like you know, I do my assignment at like 12 midnight. So don't worry about that. It's going to be at your own pace and open to everybody. Um. So Claudia and Rainier, I wanted to ask you. What do you guys think about the online classes? Have you have you guys have you guys been handling it? I would say okay. So at first, obviously, it was a big change. I was like, I'm changing from changing from going to class. I am in speech communication, so a lot of it going to classes, discussions, and basically communicating. Um, so it was definitely a change going online. I remember I was taking a public speaking class, so that was you know, how do you public speak at home? But yeah. I am definitely impressed by how the university is taking on the online courses because every class goes through Learn, which is our, like, basically our, like, website where all of our classes are. And it makes it easy to communicate with other students. So you can see whoever is in your class. And I found that there were always students who were trying to connect, even though it was online. So we had, like, Facebook groups where people would talk to one another. So definitely it's a different experience, but it's in no way limited. Like it's something that if anything, it gives you the opportunity to, like Nathaniel said, work on your own pace. So yeah. What about you, Rania? Dude, okay. So honestly, it was a pretty big um, change for me because I'm a person, like I'm an extrovert. And what I do is like I charge my social battery by talking to other people. And I'm a person who like loves human interaction. I love like, you know, having conversations with strangers and every day, I think one of the biggest things that I would look forward to when I would come to class was, oh, who am I going to sit next to today? And that's how I like actually got to meet a lot of people. So for that to suddenly, and I like loud, crowded places because uh, I, just, I don't know, I really like places like that, even if I'm not the one interacting in those uh, crowds. So for that to suddenly, you know, go sitting at home and it being like really quiet. I momentarily, I'll be honest, I did get pretty like sad a bit and I was depressed because I was like, oh, I was looking forward to coming over here and physically going to classes and, you know, it was the, everything was going great. And then, however, um, online classes were, there were a lot of similarities between online classes and, and real life. And the good thing was that I didn't really have to like move from my room all the way to a class. So it was like pretty convenient and um, I could catch up with a lot of my courses at the same time because I was saving so much time by not physically going to classes that I could just sit at home and if I had like any work that was left over, I was able to finish it. I was able to catch up and, and for like some of my courses, it actually helped me improve my grade. But all in all, it was a pretty good experience, I'd say, and I'm actually looking forward to it this fall too. So, so that's okay. pretty fun. Um, I'm going to answer some more questions in the chat. Um, so Isha Lanani, you said when do you start selecting our courses? One thing I'll say right now, especially for all the first years, um, check your email regularly because there's going to be a ton of information coming through your email. So your, there's going to be information about selecting your course, how to create an email, how to use Learn and stuff. So always make sure you're checking your email on a regular basis. And for Dashan, um, you're concerned about the, about the spring core. I'm in core program as well. I'm in the core program. And I can tell you that um, you don't have a lot to worry about. One I'll just say is that Waterloo has made, um, you know, a, like jobs available for a lot of people even during this time. Um, it's going to be like, it, you don't have to be worried about it. Right now, all I'll just say is that just focus on coming to, you know, Waterloo and get ready to enjoy the university experience. And remember, everyone, keep an eye for your email because you're going to be getting a lot of, getting a lot of information lately. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, we'll move and, on to the next thing. Yeah. Um, sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to quickly say that someone um, said in the uh, chat that there, the Waterloo subreddit said there's no extroverts in Waterloo. I'd normally say don't really rely on Reddit because um, a lot of the people who use Reddit are usually local students. So you as an international student coming from like India, Pakistan, 
you know, the UAE, it's a, it's a completely different experience. Everything is brand new for you guys. Um, you know, you will enjoy public transport. You will, you know, enjoy walking from class to class. So normally I would say that's why we, ex like, that's why we're having these live chats. So you guys don't have to rely on Reddit because Reddit is like, um, like it's good to like interact with people. But normally I'd say if you're relying on like experience, always rely on your own. Like for sure, like for sure that Reddit can never give you. So that's what I'm just going to say. Um, and now I really like want to talk about some um, curiosities I had like before coming to Canada. So I think one of the biggest concerns I had was finding halal food because I'm Muslim. So um, before coming over here, I because I know that Canada is like a very diverse place and there's something for everyone. But obviously I was scared if there would be something for me. And I was like, oh, maybe I don't know if I'm going to find halal food on campus. Maybe the options will, options will be limited. I don't know. But once I came here, I realized that there's halal food literally everywhere, right from Toronto all the way to Waterloo. In all the residences, there's halal food options. There's different places on, on campus where you can use your what card and you have halal options, you know, of like, you know, whatever you want to eat. And then we have Plaza where like I usually just go and get like biryani and stuff from there, which is like this Pakistani rice, rice dish. It's a South Asian rice dish. People have it in India as well. So that was like, so that was like pretty cool. There's vegetarian food. There's like, food, like halal food. There's everything for everyone. And so I'd really like to hear about you guys in the chat. What are you most curious about coming to Canada for? Is it the weather, the driving, the food? What are you, what are you curious about? Um, and speaking of which, I really want to tell you guys about this great online resource that you can use. Um, the International Student Guide answers a lot of common questions about coming to Waterloo and adjusting to, adjusting to Canada and the university itself. It answers questions about the water, sorry, the, the water, the food, <laughs> the food, the driving, the weather, like literally you name it, it's there. So Claudio, like what were you most curious about like coming to Canada? Honestly, I have to agree with you, Rania. I was very curious about food. Um, I am from Honduras, so like Central American food is like my my thing. I love it. And when coming here first, I was first, I was very worried about you know, will I ever find my food here? Will I ever you know have the chance? Yes. And I was actually surprised. I was happily surprised because I found it. I found their like little grocery stores that bring like Latin American goods, um, which is something I didn't think. There's some restaurants, so definitely have to agree with you with it being diverse. Canada is very diverse. So there's something for everyone. I saw a question from Anna asking if there were, were vegan foods. Yes, there are. There's a vegan grocery store. Um, well, um, it's organic um, food, but it brings a lot of vegan products as well. So definitely something for everyone. Yeah. Uh, that's very cool. Thanks for that. Um, so we asked you guys what you're most curious about, and you said some of these things. So, um, so as you said, how cold is the winter here? Very, very cold. Very, very <laughs> cold. Yeah. Um, Laura asked about the transition. The transition coming here. Uh, well, I'm from Nigeria, so it's a pretty humid, really hot place. So coming into, you know. Coming into Canada, it was it was very different. My first winter was very different. One thing I'll say is that make sure you get a really good winter jacket. Don't think you can put like a light one and get through, like get a good winter jacket. And I'm thinking I'm thinking one from Munkan, which is very funny. You heard a lot about geese, and I'm not sure whether I can punch them in self defense. One thing I'll say is stay clear of the geese. Stay <laughs> clear of the geese. Don't, yeah. Yeah. Don't don't just come around them. Um, also, from the registration, we also see that Van Dan wants to know if we have tips and advice for getting used to Canadian food and weather. Shabby is curious about the Waterloo community, and Sanchi would like to know more about the first year experiences. All these topics are really covered, really covered in the International Student Guide. We also want you to check out the Countdown to Campus video series, yeah, and the emails guide, and we are adding the links. We are adding the links to both of the resources in the chat. Cool. So another resource for international students on campus are the immigration consultants in the student success office. 
we've invited Shannon, one of the five licensed immigrants, uh, immigration consultants, to briefly chat with us today. Sorry, I completely, completely like messed up. I was like, immigrants, no way. I'm... <laughs> okay. And um, please note that she won't be able to answer any of your questions at this time. At the time, but please tune in back for um, the third live chat where that will be possible. Welcome, Shannon. Hi, hi, everybody. Hi. How's it going? It's it's great. It's hot. How are you guys doing? Good. Yeah. Good. Good. So, could you tell us about the services that you offer international students? Yeah, as an international Waterloo student, you can visit our office in the future for any questions related to your immigration status and as well documents. We provide information and guidance to students regarding their study permit status, work permit eligibilities, working in Canada options, and, and much more. Due to COVID-19, our services are offered remotely by way of phone or video call, and we offer same-day appointments every weekday, so you can book these appointments using the portal app. Uh, be sure to review the confirmation email for further instructions. We also host immigration information sessions weekly, so keep an eye on the portal for any upcoming sessions. Uh, we also offer a lot of information available on our website that you can refer to regarding your documents and how to apply. You can also connect with us and send your questions through Ask an Immigration Consultant web form. Um, again, I, again, I won't be able to answer any specific questions that you have about your documents, but the link to our resources will be shared to you, so feel free to connect with us after the chat. Wow, thank you for that, wonderful. That's actually a great resource. I like, I remember having to go to the immigration consultant to get my answers. So we are wondering if you have any advice for the incoming international students that you would like to share with our audience. Yes, for sure. So due to COVID-19, the government of, Can government of Canada confirmed on March 26 that international students who held a valid study permit or had been approved for a study permit on or before the travel restrictions took place on March 18 may now be able to travel to Canada. As many of you may have been approved for a study permit after March 18, you will not be able to travel to Canada at this time. The travel restriction is in effect until June 30th. So please keep yourself updated on the Government of the Government of Canada Frequently Asked Questions page for more information and the updates. If you meet the exemption or the travel restrictions are lifted after June 30th, in preparation for your trip to Canada and arriving at the airport, airport please make sure to have your study partner approval letter, valid passport with the temporary resident visa, or the confirmation of your valid electronic travel authorization, which will be on your study permit approval letter, letter and your letter of acceptance to Waterloo in your carry-on luggage so that it is available to show the border officer when you first land in Canada. You must also have a valid quarantine plan in place with an outline of where you will be self-isolating for 14 days and who will help you with the basic necessities like food and medication. When the officer prints out your study permit and co-op work permit, if you are in a co-op program, you need to check for errors on the, doc on the documents, like the spelling of your name, your date of birth, and your country of birth. Oh, well, thank you for those tips. And just like you mentioned, some of the important documents I had to keep with me were like my visa, my acceptance letter. Uh, I had to keep a recent bank statement of whoever was financially supporting me. And I was traveling while I was um, under 18, like I was 17 when I came to Canada. So I needed like a letter of consent from my parents because I was traveling all by myself. Um, so the links, we just dropped them in the chat. So make chat, so make sure you guys check those out for any other like documents you feel like you'll need. And just like a quick tip, keep like a hard and an electronic copy with you. Just, you know, just to be on the safe side. Shannon, do you have any more tips for us? Yes, so my second tip is if you are accepted, uh, if you have been accepted to a co-op program, please make sure that you apply for your co-op work permit together with your study permit. To apply together with your study permit and co-op work permit, remember to select yes to the, yes to the question, is work an essential component of your study? You will then be required to upload a document for evidence of work requirement in study, which you can use your letter of acceptance with the internship section highlighted. This is especially important for in 
engineering students who have their first co-op work terms in winter 2021, as a co-op work permit is required to begin your co-op placements. If you have applied for both document, documents together, you should receive both a study permit and a co-op work permit at the airport. These are two separate pieces of paper, which will say study permit and work permit at the top. If you were not issued a co-op work permit at the airport and only received a study permit, you can show the officer your letter of acceptance and kindly request that they issue you a co-op work permit as well. If the officer does not end up issuing you a co-op work permit, which can sometimes happen, or, or if you did not apply for your co-op work permit together with your study permit, we recommend applying right away after you arrive at Waterloo. This is a free and online application, which our team is very happy to guide you through the process of. We have a ton of information on our website, including how to apply for a co-op work permit in Canada. And just another note, remember that a social insurance number will also be required for you to start working. So you can also connect with us after you arrive in Waterloo for the process of applying. Oh, well, thank you so much for that, Shannon. Well, those are all the questions we have for now. And if you need any assistance, make sure that you check out the free immigration consulting resources with of which uh, the links that we've dropped in the chat below. And for more information about work uh, co-op work permits, uh, this will be shared during our third international live chat on Tuesday, the July 7th. So make sure to tune in. Thank you. Tune in. Thank you so much for joining us, Shannon, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Okay, guys, before we go into the next section, next section of the interview, I just want to answer a few more questions that we've gotten. So Sheree asked, how will we have co-ops if we're not expected to arrive until December? How the interview is taken? How is the ELR test? As this, in this dynamic situation, we're going to we can predict exactly what the winter 2021 work and 21 work term will look like. And we'll be sure to update students and our employees as soon as possible. Please know that we'll continue to support our co-op students to meet their degree requirements and have meaningful co-op experiences while adhering to the government and university travel guidelines. We will also continue to work closely with our network of over 7,000 co-op employees to encourage them to continue to bring our talented students into the organization and build upon the activities to be successful. Then Isaac, Isaac asked, it's a, if it's a deferral and I start in February, so I'm going to be in a different branch than the people who start in fall. If you're unable to begin your university studies in September 2020, you can request the deferral to January, May, or September 2021. The deferral pro program varies depending on the programs and decisions and is made on a case by case basis. Then finally, someone asked, um, Someone asked if a portal, if Quest is a portal, a portal. Yes, Quest is a portal for your student information. Is a student information student where you'll be able to pay your school fees, um, you know, find your grades, find your report cards, and other stuff. Okay, so right now I'm going to move into a different section. What value residences? I know you guys have been curious about that. So I want to ask in the chat. Have you guys found housing in Waterloo yet? We want to know. Are you staying in Waterloo residence? Are you living on campus? You don't know yet. Tell us in the chat. Um, right now, I'm going to be introducing Selena, who is a, st a student who will talk to us about Waterloo residence today. Hey, Selena. Hey, everyone. My name is Selena. I'm an international student from Jamaica in the Honors Arts and Business program, heading into my second year, majoring in economics. Okay, so the first question we have for you, Zelina, is what was your biggest misconception about living in residence as an international student? To be honest, I did not have any misconceptions about living in residence. As after I completed high school in 2018, I took a gap year and I went and lived in South Africa for about four and a half months. And there I was pretty much exposed to living with roommates and eating food that I was not accustomed to. So to be honest, luckily, I really was able to transition into residence without having any misconceptions whatsoever. Well, oh, that's really great. That's a really, a really awesome experience. Um, so I want to know, I'm wondering about the food. Is there any meal plan that you recommend the students to get? Well, 
I was living in residence during my first year. I was living in a suite style residence. And for suite style residences, the meal plan is optional as there's a full kitchen within the suite. So there are three optional meal plans for suite style residences, namely casual, saver, and super saver. I had purchased the super saver, saver meal plan. And for me, it was really great because it gave me the best of both worlds as I didn't have to like worry about cooking food or preparing any kind of meals during like midterms, finals, or like any sort of stressful period. For traditional living, however, a meal plan is mandatory because traditional residences do not have a kitchen within their residence. Some residences do have a shared kitchen on and on each floor, usually located near the floor lounge, where all the students can use that area to warm up leftover food. And we also do have like some microwaves near the cafeteria. But regardless, having a mandatory meal plan, it's really quite beneficial in the long run as you don't really have to worry about anything. You just get up, head to the calf and grab something to eat. Yeah, I have to agree. Meal plans are extremely beneficial. Some, something I wanted to add too is that when you're choosing a meal plan, choose the one that best works for you. So that means keeping in mind your eating habits and your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So for example, in my first year, I remember that when it came to exam period, so that last month, I had finished almost all of my meal plan money. And now I'm not saying this is gonna be the case for you. My experience is to maybe totally different to yours. For example, my friends, they had so much money left at the end of the term. So definitely just try to keep in mind, like, mind, like what your eating habits are and if you do run out of money um or manage to like spend all of your flex dollars on uw merch instead of your laundry um that's okay you can always add more money <laughs> i'm looking at your tag <laughs> yeah but honestly do not worry about it just try to keep in mind like what your lifestyle is um but that being said we just wanted to know selena what are your top three tips for living with roommates oh my top three tips, three tips. Okay, number one is definitely agreeing on some ground rules. Honestly, I think you should really take that time out to talk about like your habits, your likes, your preferences, your pet peeves, just like having that kind of conversation with your your sweet mates or like your floor mates can really help you in the long run because whether you're rooming with like a friend or like someone you don't know, it really pace to have this conversation about your living habits. Second of all, of all, I really think you should be open-minded. What, like, for instance, living with people, even if you know them for a long time or if you're meeting them for the first time, it can be pretty intimidating. So it's really good to keep an open mind and just being open to trying like different fun things. So being open-minded is like really good. And plus, even if you have to have like that alone time, just like away from your residence or like where you're living, you're living. There are so many places on campus you can go and have that alone time. For instance, we have like different study spaces, lounges, even multi-faith rooms in like two of our residences. So that's pretty good. And my third tip is communication. Communication really is key to like building that successful roommate, floor mate, suite mate relationship. Honestly, I really think you need to keep the lines of communication open by talking, listening, and understand, understanding each other. Because a lot of times in terms of like conflicts that may arise, it's usually due to miscommunication or the lack of communication. So honestly, if you come upon a situation where you can't resolve it amongst yourselves, you really don't have to worry. We have tons of support in residence, whether you can speak to your Don on the floor or even any one of the residence life staff members, they'll be more than willing to help. That's that's really great. Um, and if you're living off campus, there's a food bank in school where you can get non-perishable items. And I also want to say that there are a lot of off-campus housing as much as there's on-campus residences. So don't worry if you don't find a space on campus. There are actually a, a ton of places on campus that you can find. So these are some great points. So Selena, I wanted to ask, how much storage space do you get in residence? And what would you recommend students to bring? The reason I ask this, I ask this is because when I came to Canada, I could only bring two suitcases. Um, 
and the space was limited. And when I was packing, I didn't know, so I only brought notebooks and stationery, which I found out later on that I could buy in Canada. So with the new self-isolation room, I know I recommend that students bring some ice um, linens, like your beddings and a towel, as you not be able to go to the store upon arrival. But what do you recommend students for to do? Well, honestly, I do recommend that the students bring bring the essentials, Re regardless of where you're placed. You will have some sto storage underneath your bed, as well as a wardrobe to store your personal belongings. You'll also be provided with a desk and a chair. If you're living in traditional style residence, packing should be relatively easy. As opposed to like living in suite style residences, don't forget that you need to furnish the apartments or the townhouse with like kitchen appliances, which you can get in Canada, get in Canada. And if you're worried about like, how am I going to get it? Just know we do have places such as like Walmart that can, you can actually buy these stuff online and have it shipped to you. So you don't really have to worry too much about having to go out and get that. So also one thing to note about suite style living, it's really good to connect with your suite mates beforehand. So you don't have like you bringing in like two microwaves or something like that. You can know that you have like one of each stuff that you need. You need. However, if you are just completely unsure, regardless of like what you can bring or what you cannot bring, there is a list on the housing website listing uh, listing out what is allowed and what is not allowed for both suite style and traditional residences. Okay, so if I'm getting this right, Selena, we should only be bringing essential items, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, first, before um, continuing, I just wanted to, I just wanted to remind you guys when you are sending in uh, your comments, your questions, and everything, uh, please remember to send to all participants so that that way everybody can see your question and it can be answered quicker. Um, so remember on the chat when you're going to send something click send to all participants. Also, okay, so before we were asking about housing, where you were staying and where you were planning to live. And I can see that most of you are, well, some of you are staying at home or staying back or staying back home for the fall. And I can see that some of you are living in residence. Um, that's great. I feel like either one or or, I feel like you'll definitely have something new to experience, whether you're staying at home or you're coming to Canada and you will be able to connect with people either way. I see that most of you are already doing group chats. That's great. We love to see you connecting with one another. Um, I also see some questions here. I see a couple asking about the social life at U Waterloo. I feel like it would be nice for all of us to answer. To answer. Um, does somebody have something to say about residence life and social life? Yeah, I'd love to talk about Rev, honestly, because Rev is like one of those uh, uh, residences where all the, literally like all the extroverts live. Ronite Village, if anyone's like choosing that for a uh, residence. I think it's beautiful, first of all, like the area, I really like it. And um, a lot of people have like roommates there. So like when I went, um, what ended up happening is that uh, the person that I um, ended up being roommate, being roommates with, she is now my best friend and we live like five minutes away. So, um, you know, that's like a pretty good experience that I got to share. And um, everyone in residence is like super friendly. So, you know, you can literally just like walk up to anyone because I remember in the first week when I came to U Waterloo, I didn't really have any friends at that time. So I would just go up to like a random table and I'd sit and I'd be like, excuse me, can I sit here with you guys? And they'd be like, yeah, sure. And then that's how I'd like, I'd make a lot of friends. And I did this in, this, in class, I did this on residence. Um, and that's how I like uh, got to meet a lot of uh, people. It was a lot of fun. Of course, it's like, you know, everyone gets nervous making that first interaction, which is completely normal. And I'll admit it was easier for me because I was um, an extrovert. So even if you're like an introvert, you can always find like whatever suits you as a person to have as like a group of friends. Just, you know, go for go for anything you're comfortable with. You know, there's like there's all types of personality, personality traits all over campus and you can always find people you relate to. So, yeah, definitely. Definitely, that's actually great. I'm also seeing some um, questions as well in the Google Docs. Um, so some questions that I would like to answer. So somebody asked, will you be able to get to know your seatmate or roommate before going to Red on campus? 
Based on the public health recommendation, all traditional style and double intercon interconnected rooms have been changed to a single room. Therefore, roommates' requests can only be accommodated in suite style accommodation. Please note that we may not have enough suite style accommodation. Please note that we may have enough suite style accommodation to meet the demand of roommate beds. If you are assigned to a traditional style roommate, we are unable to guarantee you a room assignment near your requested roommate. Now, Selina, I have a question. So people that are coming to you water in the four residents, will they have roommates? Connected rooms have been changed to a single room. Therefore, roommates' requests can only be accommodated in suite style accommodation. Please note that we may not have enough suite style accommodation. Please note that we may have enough suite style accommodation to meet the demand of roommate beds. If you are assigned to a traditional style roommate, we are unable to guarantee you a room assignment near your requested roommate. Now, Selina, I have a question. So people that are coming to you were telling me before, residents, will they have roommates? Well, all of the rooms that you have mentioned before, they have been changed to single rooms. So all of our double rooms are now single rooms. So as to accommodate all of the public health regulations that have been put in place due to COVID-19. For suite style, it's still the single room within the suite. So even though a lot of students coming in, you may not have a roommate that is in the same room as you, you're gonna have your floor mates and you can get to know them once you once you arrive. For suite mates, if your suite mate allows for their information to be released to you beforehand, you more than likely will get that information and each roommate will get that information and you'll be able to get in contact with them and speak to them and get to know them. Mm, okay, and I wanted to ask as well. So, what's asking in chat? Is there an option to quarantine in in residence? No, I, oh, I'm so so sorry, but no. Students who are traveling to campus need to self isolate as per public health guidelines. So they have to do so prior to moving into residence, as residence space cannot be offered to students for this purpose. I do encourage the students to check back the housing website as we will be offering a list of options and resources that can help you find a place to stay during this time. Our goal is to have this list available by, well, by June 26. So the students can make their own decision of the best accommodation option before moving into residence. And also one thing, the students will be required to plan their own activities and make payment directly with the accommodation provider. Okay, I think that wraps up all the questions we can ask. Selena, is there any other thing you'd like to share with the incoming international students? Well, I just wanna ask, have you secured residence for this fall? If you've already applied, you're one step closer to maximizing your university experience. If you haven't submitted an application today, Waterloo Residences, we're sending out residence offers of available space every day until the end of summer, so don't miss out. Also, check out our Get Ready for Residence live event coming up on July 15 to see staff and students share all the details to get you moving ready for residence. Oh, pretty good, pretty good. Um, yes, we just have. Okay. okay. Now. Um, before we go into the q and I just wanted to let you know that we're going to let you know how you can win the giveaway. So, in order to win the gift card from Tim Hortons, you will have to be the first one in the comment to tell us what percentage of students are international. So, what percentage of undergraduate students are not from Canada? We want to know, do you think it's 20%, 30%, 40%, is it 50? Send in the chat and also remember, to click in for all participants when you're sending a comment. Cool, well, that's pretty cool. Um, I think there were like some questions that we missed out a little bit earlier. Yeah, so is it okay yeah. with you guys if we can revisit them? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was about to do. So this is an open cool. question period time. So we're going to share some questions and answer them as well. So, uh, Let's look in the chat. So Isaac asked again, if I defer, defer to, do I still have time to confirm a spot in residence? Right now, we're working towards guaranteeing winter and spring housing for any first year students that are academically defers. A process is being developed and will be posted to our website shortly. Also, I can see 
they are actually asking you guys, Claudia and Renia, uh, what resident community were you part part of in your first year? First year. Claudia, would you like to go first? Yeah. So I was actually in Claudette Miller Hall um, at that time. I, so I'm in my fourth year. So that was 2017. It was the first year that Claudette Miller Hall was open. It's like the traditional style residence inside of UWP. And I remember at that time, it was so new, it was called still the new residence building. It was only NRB. But I remember that I loved it. It was so it was so nice because it had some privacy. You still had a roommate, but it was like semi-private. Um, but at the same time, I feel like you could connect with everyone everywhere. So for example, a place where I could make a lot of friends was the elevator, believe it or not. Um, when I went into the elevator, I would always have a like, talk or a chat with so many people and I feel like most of my friends I met that so organically like around residents um but yeah what about you guys um well I think uh, okay yeah, so like I mentioned earlier I lived in Rev like Ronite Village and uh it was like pretty cool my roommate's now my best friend and I got to meet a lot of different people and you know honestly it was a very like welcoming uh, energy because um, every a lot of people are on my floor were international, so I could like relate to them a lot, and um, and like yeah, I think like honestly everyone had such a good, such a good like everyone I knew on the floor had such a good experience in residence because there was always something to do, there was always like new events, and um, it was always like a really like like a really fun place to be in to be honest. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great. I, I, for anyone, I think I lived in Rev as well, and Rev was really a great time to, you know, communicate and meet if I meet friends. Let's answer a few more questions. So, um, I'm sure I made ask, ask, does G Waterloo help international students set up credit cards and SIM cards? SIN num well, they, we don't, they don't help with credit cards, but they do help you with SIM numbers. So, it, the, I'll be sending the link below for that, right? Okay. Also, we want also another question. Another question that I can see here is, can I move into res after the start of your term, like two weeks after the start? Yes, you can. Students can, students can submit a late arrival form and they'll be arriving a couple weeks into the term beginning. Students must submit the form or they will risk their resident contract being canceled. Uh, and then I saw a really important question um, from Quan. Is there any is there a good way to provide a proof of financial support for the study permit? I'm kind of perplexed about that. Um, well, the fall due date is August 25, 2020. For details about paying, getting fees arranged or permits or promissory notes, please visit the student financial service website, which will be which will be dropped in the chat below. And then someone asked, hello, I'm an Indian student. I wanted to know whether I should apply for a study and work permit now, or I, should I wait for my class and apply? Well, um, despite it not being required, it is highly recommended that students obtain a valid study permit before beginning their studies, even if online, outside of Canada. Outside of Canada. Be, get, be sure to get in touch with an immigration consultant web form. We're dropping that link in the chat below. Um, finally, I want to ask Claudia and Rainier, uh, Question that asked it, how how did you feel like having a sense of belonging in the UW community? How did you like you know get to know people? How did you connect with people? Honestly, so the thing I found is the more I participated in events in the university or even in like different different communities, the more I got to know people. So for example, what I mean is yes, like I mentioned, I met a lot of people organically in residence, so on the elevator and in the cafeteria. But I feel like I truly started, you know, really making connections on campus when I started, you know, putting myself out there and trying to join all of the events. So one of the things I did um, in my second year was um, joining a club in the university. I joined the Association of Latin American Students and I got the opportunity to meet, opportunity to meet a lot of new people. Um, I've also had the opportunity to work on campus part time and I've got to meet a lot of new coworkers who I didn't know were in my program or in my classes. So definitely what I've found is just putting yourself out there. That's the way I got like, you know, to feel like campus is really my home. 
um, just being able to talk to the person that's next to you in class, even though it may seem like frightening at first. Everybody wants to make friends, especially in first year. Everybody wants to make friends any day, but but especially in first year, you will find that it will be it will be a place where you will be able to openly talk to people and just be like, hey, hi, I'm Claudia, nice to meet you. Um, can I sit next to you? Or like, oh, what program you are are you in? So yeah. Yeah. Um, I have to agree with you on that. Like, I think like uh, joining clubs and uh, student associations is like a big way of like connecting to people. When I uh, when it comes to like finding my support system, I'll be completely honest. I just I think I was just blessed in that because all of them found me, and they're the ones who like approached me because usually I'm the one who like goes and approaches people. So it's pretty cool to have like you know five of my friends who are like currently my biggest support system over here in Canada come up to me and be like, oh, hey, you want to be friends? And I was like, pretty amazing. And uh, the other way I met people was um, like to the Pakistan Student Association, because I'm from Pakistan. And a lot of you guys are from India, so you guys can find the Indian Student Association. And um, um, as well as like the Muslim Student Association, uh, I met a lot of people through that. And some of like, uh, like I have a really good friend from there as well. And I'm so grateful I got to meet her because so that's like a really good way to interact with people and I think like once classes get started a lot of people like make like how you guys are like thinking of making group chats right now in the comments a lot of people make group chats for like study sessions se sorry study sessions together and like group projects does a lot of the bonding bonding for you so you know you should always be open to looking forward to you know interacting with people always be like open to interaction you don't have to actively necessarily you know put yourself in the social situations you're not comfortable in just because you see everyone else interacting do what you're comfortable with and everything will come to you like seriously just do what you think is best and um remember like coming to university it's not about the quantity of your friends it's about the quality of your friends because you're because you're far away from home you're an international student and it's the first time you've come I know a lot of you for the first time are coming to anywhere outside, you know, South Asia. So, you know, like that's a really big change. And um, coming over here, you know, depending on public transport instead of like, you know, private drivers is also like a very big change. When you have like you, when you have like your support system of like friends, like your proper group friends, they tell you how to use the bus, they tell you how to use the train, train, and they literally just like, you know, they're there for you all the time. So make sure you settle in, take your time and, uh, you know, get to know people. There's no rush to make friends immediately as soon as you arrive to Waterloo. Let things happen naturally and organically. Okay. And, and finally, I just want to add a few things like on a personal note. So mm -hmm. for one, um, co-op job as an international student. I want to tell you that um, for co-op, co-op is an equal opportunity thing for every single person. person. So what I has made you possible for every single people, every single person to apply. I've done two co-op jobs, so I can tell you that, yes, there are opportunities for international students. And also, do not worry about um, lectures and also course. I know some of you might be worried about the online lectures, online courses. I want you to be clearly understand that Waterloo has made it accessible for everyone and actually easy for everyone. So, you know, there's time limits, there's more, you know, you know, your lecturers have been told to record most of the lectures so you can come back to it at a later date. So do not worry about and stress about that too much. It's just great to have you in the VW community. So yeah, uh, so I'm just going to say this. Um, so what is it like for international students and how easy it is to adapt to new environments? Like I've said, for an international student, at the end of the day, it's just about the sense of community and just, you know, make friends be open that's the main thing just be open open smile at everyone and you know you get to meet a ton of people and balancing right now i know most people are at home so um but online class may be new to you one thing i'll just say is that make sure you have proper time management you know have sticky notes have a plan here and there and you know you'll be able to you'll be able to um this thing survive never survive you're able to do well in your first year in school just a um, few more questions that I just wanted to an answer down below. So some people were talking about the EL, sorry, ELER test um, and different things. Just right. So if I just like look in the chat, wanted to. 
Okay, so some people are asking, what is the contact email if we have questions about the health insurance scheme? So you guys can contact Student Financial Services via the web form or email email sfs at, uh, at uwaterloo.ca. And um, I think that's pretty much it. And someone asked, are there like parties frequently held? Honestly, um, every club and every, you know, thing that you volunteer for always have get togethers at the end to celebrate your success of achieving whatever goals you did in that club. So for example, um, for the Muslims, the Muslim Student Association, they did this end of the term um, dinner uh, get together where a lot of like students, um, you know, got to attend this uh, forum as uh, oh look we've completed an entire term together it's a really good way to bring the community together it's a really good way to interact with people and literally like in everything you participate um let it be like you know end of the term like you know your first end of like end of the term and res your dons usually will probably host something that will thing that will celebrate you being there for like the first four months of college so it's like very interesting way to like you know interact with people and you know i'd always like suggest that you guys attend these things if you're looking for a way to connect to people and make friends okay nathaniel anything else um no no okay so that's all the questions we have time for but remember that we will be back again next week to answer some more so i saw all of, i saw all of you asking questions about clubs and how we talked about that's our way that we involved um, in campus. Do not worry, we will be asked, we will be answering all of those questions and more about e Waterloo lifestyles in our next live chat. But now for the fun part, we want to see who's the winner to our giveaway. So, so yeah, honestly, I'm going to check the chat to see some of the answers. Okay, so let's see. Sorry, guys. <laughs> So I think, yeah, I'm like trying to see. Okay, so Isaac said around 40. Mm -hmm. Then I see. Sorry, friends, if it's take if it takes me a second, it just goes oh down. My gosh, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm like so like I'm looking to forward it. to this. I'll figure it out. <laughs> um, we can help you look. Yeah, for sure. If you guys can, I see Kudrat. Kudrat said 68%. I saw that Baron set 10%. Um, what else? Let's see. Someone um, guessed. Yeah. Uh, hold on. I think There's I'd one. like, I think, yes, um, Isha Lalani said 20%. Ooh, okay, I see the high, one of the highest ones, 80% by, by that group. Unfortunately, guys, the closest, oh, I see one that's coming in from Arian saying 34%. Okay, so unfortunately, guys, the first one that got it right was Wan Yi Li. The correct guess is 21%. So out of all undergraduate mm -hmm. students, 21%. So for every 100 students that you see, 21 will be coming from a different country just like us. So congrats, Wan Yi Li. Um, private message the Ask Us panelist. So when you send, when you're gonna send a comment, comment, send it to the Ask Us panelist only, and send in your email so we can send the gift card your way. Cool, and congratulations. Yeah, and talking about Tim Hortons, okay guys, it doesn't matter if you won the gift card or if you didn't, you gotta try the ice cap when you come to Canada. There's a Tim Hortons everywhere. So I know that, for example, the gift card won't be able to be used on campus because on campus um, locations do not allow gift cards but you will be able to use it anywhere. And when I mean anywhere, I really mean it, really mean it. There's a Tim Hortons everywhere. So make sure that when you arrive to Canada, you order yourself something. I recommend the ice cap. What do you guys recommend? Honestly, right now, I just recommend the bagel. Bagel, <laughs> bagels are nice. Bagels and cheese, that's the best. Mm -hmm. honestly, yeah. That's honestly yeah. great, yeah. Um, I probably, okay, I, freaking love French vanilla, okay? I am a sucker for like sweet hot drinks, like hot chocolate and stuff and stuff. So I love, you know, like getting like a French vanilla, like, um, you know, I always like get a donut with it sometimes. And um, honestly, 
the cool thing about Thames is that I know that a lot of you international students have uh, families in Brampton or Toronto or Mississauga. And right off the back, like when you come to the airport, to wherever you go in Canada, there's always going to be a Tim Hortons. So if someone asks you, hey, what do you want as a gift? Tell them to tell them to get you a Tim Hortons gift card because it's literally useful every single where. You know, you can get it literally like anywhere. It's super convenient as well. Great way to like just grab like breakfast and, you know, go on your way to classes. Well, um, thank you everyone for coming and joining us. Honestly, it's been great. Thank you, Nathaniel and Claudia for, you know, taking time out to answer all these questions. And we want to know if you guys found this uh, live chat helpful today. So make sure to fill out the so, survey that pops up at the end of this live chat. Yeah, um, that's really good. And lastly, look, these videos are going to be shown again. They will be posted on August on the Waterloo Ready website. So keep checking the guide for all your info. And yeah, thank you all for participating in this. We hope we answer most of your questions. Goodbye, and we'll see you next time. Cool. Bye. Thank you for coming. Bye bye. Yeah, next week. I'm excited. Yeah, on June 30th, by the way. June 30th. June 30th, yes. June 30th. Mark your calendars, guys. Mark your calendars. If you're interested about clubs and everything, mark your calendars. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. We'll see you guys next week then. See you guys. Bye.